In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Please do be seated for our notices. You'll be glad to know there's not a lot of notices today. Just a quick reminder that the Lent course continues tomorrow evening um, and is strongly recommended by those who were here last week. Um, and just a message in our service sheet where you've got the music to help you um, singing the responses. When we get to the Lamb of God, which is our just after the middle, under breaking of bread, the first line is repeated. There's a little repeat sign at the end of the line, but those of us who are not brilliant at reading music may miss it um, while we're singing. So the first line of Lamb of God is repeated, as you always have done. Um, but sometimes when you're following a new piece of paper, your eyes go ahead and the brain blindly follows. That's all, so you know you'll be doing the right thing. Thank you all. Good morning, everybody. And um, it's a joy and a privilege to uh, publish the bands of marriage between David Milling of All Saints North Highcombe and Rebecca Jane Dewick of this parish. This is for the first time of asking if any of you know of any reason in law why they not, may not marry each other, you are to declare it. That's always good. Shall we pray? Lord, we pray that as David and Rebecca get ready for their wedding day, not only would their love for each other grow stronger, but they would become more and more aware of your great love for them. Amen. As we begin our service, let us pray for the help of the Holy Spirit to focus on God in this time of worship. We pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord, who is full of compassion and knowledge of our transgressions, in penitence and faith. Almighty God, God our Heavenly God, Father, we have sinned against you and against, against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, for our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, 
have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray our collect prayer for our service today. Almighty God, by the prayer and discipline of Lent, may we enter into the mystery of Christ's sufferings and by following in his way, come to share in his glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we have our first reading. A reading from the book of Genesis. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless. And I will make a covenant between me and you, and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abraham fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abraham, but your name shall be Abraham. For I made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you throughout their generations, for an everlasting covenant, to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. And I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she will give rise to nations. Kings of people shall come from her. This is the word of the Lord.
Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord is a great God. O that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus began to teach his disciples that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with the disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, What can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Do please be seated, choir and service. We're going to be watching another video, so if you wanted to, (coughs) down to the chapel, probably the best place if you wanted to see that video. So it's a a rather cheesy anecdote, I'm afraid, but I I saw a church once that had uh, an estate agent sign out the front of it. And written on that estate agent sign, it said, we are the sole agents for this area. Uh, Soul, S-O-U-L. The question, though, from our gospel reading is kind of whether you should sell your soul or whether you should forfeit your soul or whether you should actually care for your soul. And I think there's a deeper question here of whether or not actually our soul is full of love. During Lent, as I said, we'll be watching the weekly film produced by Bishop Stephen, Uh, as we join with the rest of the diocese in taking up our cross and following Jesus in the way of love. And once again, as was mentioned at the beginning, we'll be going deeper in our reflections on this video on Monday evening. As an opening question, though, before we play the video, have you ever thought of God's love as a hidden treasure? And what do you think of that idea of God's love as a hidden treasure? Mark's Gospel tells us that Jesus' public ministry began when he was baptized in the River Jordan by John the Baptist. Many people came from all over the country to hear John preaching and went down into the water to be baptized as a sign of repentance and faith. But when Jesus was baptized, something remarkable happened. As Jesus was coming up out of the water, Mark writes, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, in you I am well pleased. Jesus' whole identity, his sense of who he is, is grounded in that one word, beloved. Your identity and mine begin there as well, in understanding that we are deeply loved by God, our Maker. But often it takes a lifetime to discover and understand this love God has for us. Your identity and mine is not 
primarily about whether we are young or old, rich or poor, our racial background, our gender, our sexuality, whether we are married or single. It's not about what we do for a living or where we went to school or how many likes we have on social media. Our identity is grounded in the deep, powerful truth that God loves us. You are deeply loved, appreciated, known, valued and called into friendship with God. Most of us spend our lives trying to grow in our understanding of that love. It's a love we cannot earn, so we will never feel we deserve to be loved. It's a love which we need to receive by faith and trust and live in that faith. So just take a moment to try on that idea for size. Imagine what life would be like if you could really believe and understand that you are loved. If you could see the whole length and breadth and height and depth of God's steadfast love for you. How would that change your anxieties and fears? The way you approach this week, your closest friendships, the way you live your life. We love because God first loved us, writes John in his first letter. This one word, beloved, this vital truth transforms the way we see the first two commandments. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength and you shall love your neighbour as yourself. The invitation to love God and love others are the greatest commandments only because we ourselves are loved beyond measure. People who do not know that they are loved are unable themselves to give that love. We need to understand that God's love is steadfast, strong, merciful, forgiving and everlasting. Understanding that love is the key to being able to love. Being able to love is the key to life. Some people grow up in the Christian faith and know that they are loved by God from early in their childhood. Many others return to God much later in life after many difficult experiences. It's vital to understand that when we turn in our lives and want to know God and love God again at whatever age, God already loves us. God is longing for us, reaching out to us. Jesus tells a story of a father of two sons. Both have to rediscover their father's love. The younger one leaves home and spends his inheritance on reckless living. When he spent all he has, he returns, expecting to stammer out an apology and live as a servant in his father's house. But that is not the way. The father in the story is constantly watching out for his son to return. When he's still far off on the road, he runs to meet him. He holds him in a deep embrace. He puts a ring on his finger and shoes on his feet. He has never stopped loving him. The elder brother has lived at home for so long, but has become estranged from his father. He is angry and jealous when the younger son comes home. Again, his father loves him, comes to him, pleads with him to come and join the celebration. We love because God first loves us. Jesus tells a pair of dramatic and exciting parables about the inestimable value of this love and the difference it makes. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid then in his joy. He goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all he had and bought it. The treasure and the pearl are discovering how much you are loved by God in a love that searches and holds and embraces and saves and sustains and gives life. Some people seem to discover that love almost by chance, but Christians would say by God's providence, like the treasure someone might find in a field while they're digging for something else. Some people discover that love because they are searching 
for meaning and purpose and love in many different places, like a merchant looking for the one pearl, the pearl of great price. But when you find that treasure, when you discover that pearl of great price, you know it is worth more than anything else in the world. It's worth selling your house and everything you own to understand. This is the most precious thing of all, the best this world affords, to know God's love in Jesus. Because this love really does change everything. And this is why we're called to love God with all our heart and soul and mind and strength and to love our neighbor as ourselves. Because this is the way God in Jesus loves us, totally, completely, offering his life for us and to us as his friends and as God's children. The letter to the Ephesians contains this profound and beautiful prayer for all of us, which reflects the truth that it takes a lifetime to understand God's deep and transforming love and to set that love at the heart of who we are. This is my prayer for you and for everyone journeying with come and see. In Paul's words, I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. So what does it mean to live out of this deep understanding of the love of God? We'll begin to explore that next week. Come and see. Father, as we seek out the treasure of your love, we care for our soul. We pray that we may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, the height, and the depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that we may be filled with all the fullness of God. Amen. And if it's comfortable for you, would you please stand for the creed? So we pray together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead 
and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please do be seated or kneel if that's your custom for our prayers of intercession. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Help us to observe a good Lent, developing the spiritual things within us. May we learn to set our mind on divine things and not human. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Apologies. In our diocese, we pray for our bishops, Stephen and Olivia, and in our parish for everyone in Bracknell working to support those struggling with everyday life. Lord, in your mercy. God of mission, who alone brings growth to your church, send your Holy Spirit to give vision to our planning, wisdom to our actions, and power to our witness. Help our church to grow in numbers, in spiritual commitment to you, and in service to our local community. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the welfare of our planet and for all those places in the world where there is conflict or natural disaster, for Ukraine and Russia, for Israel and Gaza. May the countries recognize their boundaries and learn to live in peace. Where there is flood or drought or other disaster, we pray for the services helping alleviate these. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We hold before you, Lord, all who suffer at this time in body, mind, or spirit, naming especially Giovanna, David and family, Phyllis, Craig, Barbara, Jeannie, Marion, Toby, Bridget, Dominic, Christine, Pam, Marion, Shirley, Connie, the late Richard's family. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. Sustain and support us. Be with those who care for the sick and lift up all who are brought low, that we may find comfort knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we remember before you all those who have died recently. Naming Timmy Watson, Hugh McIntosh, Peggy Neville, Richard Ocott, the Reverend Gordon Shaw, the Right Reverend Alan Wilson, and Jasmine Freeman and those whose anniversary of death falls this week, Gilbert Hodgson, Ben and Banya, Doris Brooker, Norman Wilkes, and Ken Buckland. Rest eternal grant to them, O Lord. May they rest in peace. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Mary Magdalene, St. Michael, St. Francis, and St. Clare, and all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole of creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for the Savior sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
it is comfortable for you, would you please stand for the peace? Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. God of wisdom, may the light of your eternal word, our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, lead us in holiness and guide us to glory. 
We ask this in his name. Amen. Please do be seated. right and good to give you thanks and praise almighty God and everlasting Father through Jesus Christ your Son for in these 40 days you lead us into the desert of repentance that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again through fasting prayer and acts of service you bring us back to your generous heart through study of your holy word you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendor of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels forever praising you and singing. Loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and as we obey his commands, send your Holy Spirit, the broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St Michael, St Mary Magdalene and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. 
Savior taught, so together we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only to say the word, and I shall be. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty God, you see that we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. May Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Peace to love and serve the Lord.